Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to the Hummer EV. This thing rocks, but it's crazy and like has a massive battery pack and no efficiency. I've been averaging 1.1 miles per kilowatt hour, but you just gotta love the excess. You know, they're not making a ton of these. It's really a showpiece. I would say a halo product for Ultium. And so far I've just been truly impressed. I just got 400 kilowatts of regen in a hard braking scenario in this thing, which is the most I've ever seen by just about 100 kilowatts. Totally crazy. So um, what we have here is the Hummer EV. This is the double stacked battery pack, the biggest, the baddest tri-motor version. And what I wanted to see was how much does it cost to charge this thing? Because uh, this is really worst case scenario. You know, when I charge my smart car, it costs me a couple dollars at home uh, at my electric smart car and, it, and it's no big deal. A Tesla at a supercharger, you're in that mid $20 range. This thing has, I'm not totally sure on the battery pack capacities. I'm going to have to double check all of this, but 212 usable is seemingly where people are honing in and then about 246 to 250 kilowatt hours gross. The lights are already going out here before we've even plugged the dang thing in. So the grid's getting ready because we're going from zero to 100% on the Hummer EV. I'm not branding this video as a full charging curve analysis. I wanna really focus on the costs in this video and then I'll have a separate one talking about how it actually charges and compared to its competition and things like that. I've just taken the Hummer EV over here. I've been preconditioning the battery pack and my understanding just from previous charge recordings is this thing's been a little bit difficult to evaluate. So let's focus on the cost. Let's see how many kilowatt hours it takes to fill this thing up. Of course, there's always losses, but you have to pay for those losses. And the other thing I want to uh, mention is <laughs> all three of these stations here, one, two, and three, those are paid stations. This one, I just noticed, <laughs> this is EA's worst nightmare. This one says complimentary session, which means I can just plug the Hummer in and it's not going to cost anything. Now, this was a complimentary station a few weeks ago. I have no idea why it outputs full power. There's nothing wrong with it. I've tested it. I would have thought they would have gotten rid of it by now. But hey, this is uh, this is like worst case scenario for those guys, isn't it? We're rolling up with a dead Hummer EV and we're going to go from zero till it clicks off to full and then take a look at that kilowatt hour number. And then we can at least calculate it based off of a bunch of different rates as to what it'll cost to charge this thing. Now it is a little bit different than home charging because home charging uses AC. Um, the losses will be slightly different and perhaps I'll go zero to full on AC charging as well, just to see A, how long that takes and B, uh, the losses here. But what we have to do is we actually have to drain the Hummer all the way out. So let me jump inside. I'll show you around it a little bit, but no secret, I really am in love with this thing. This thing rocks. Thanks to Energy Sage, powering your EV on solar helps you charge it with even cleaner energy. And whether you have an EV or not, solar can help you save money and help the environment. There are even options for renters to switch to a local solar farm and cut their energy bills. Energy Sage is the number one website to learn about solar and shop for solar solutions. In their trusted, unbiased marketplace, hundreds of pre-vetted solar installers compete for your business, ensuring you get high-quality solutions and save 20 to 30% compared to going it alone. Plus, it's free to use. Click on the link in the description to visit Energy Sage and see what you can save. Here she is. Forgive some of the lighting here at night. The lights are pretty bright on this thing. Hummer EV, this is the sort of the first edition, the moon theme. Let's jump inside. We're pretty low. It's predicting 14 miles of range. Weirdly, it doesn't tell you um, state of charge unless you turn it off. I think, is that how that works? Yep, there we go. 6% state of charge. Otherwise, I don't believe there's anywhere else we can show state of charge, but we got to burn 6%. It says charge vehicle soon. No problem. We're down to one mile per kilowatt hour over the last 164 miles, but I've been pretty hard on this thing, to be honest. 
Um, so let's crank up the heater. It does have a heat pump. All GM Ultium stuff does have a heat pump, but I've seen it pull a maximum of 12 kilowatts off of the heater. Let's see what we can get this thing up to. It spikes heat into the cabin, of course, and then it seems to level off at around, uh, yep, there's the heater maxed out, 12 kilowatts. Gotta love that. Seems to max, uh, I should say, level out at around four kilowatts or so. I can't wait to film all the videos with this thing. We really need to evaluate this, not only in the context of the Hummer EV, but really in the context of Ultium, I would say, into drive. Let's not do one pedal. I'm actually going to put it in neutral every time I need to slow down, and that way we can avoid um, stuffing regen into the battery pack. So 5% shouldn't take too long. This thing does have over 300 miles of range. It's on 35 inch tires. It's one of the coolest things to drive, but I'll have a full driving review on this. But let me go drive around, drain it out till we're at 0%. Then we'll plug it in on that complimentary session unit. Why not? We'll get the free juice if they're giving it. And then, uh, yeah, A, see how long it takes, and B, see how much it costs to charge it up. Uh, I have been preconditioning a battery, like I mentioned, it's no longer available when you get down into the very low battery percentages is what it looks like. Could be a temperature thing, could be a state of charge thing, time will tell. Uh, I literally just got in this thing yesterday and haven't had a chance to film with it until now. Very interesting here, it's showing low. So at 5% state of charge, it does what the Bolt does, and it doesn't show you range anymore. It says reduced acceleration, but that's floored, and that's 360 kilowatt output. <laughs> that's more than most cars at full throttle. Oh, we got the heater, heater to pull 13 kilowatts. You can see there's just one little tiny bar flashing right there, which means we are at 1% state of charge. So I'm just letting this thing drain out it had almost no power i was just like full throttle pulling in here so i decided to back it in here run the battery heater down of course it's getting cold outside which i'm hoping actually helps with this charging session uh, one of our theories is that the hummer ev battery pack is actually overheating in some other tests um, this is just a theory we don't know and it's causing some weird behavior in the charging sessions either way i brought all my gopros to record this one because on the off chance that this happens to be the perfect charging session, then we're good. Now, before we plug in the Hummer EV, I just want to make a note that this is not uh, what it costs at home to charge. Again, home electricity is and should be much cheaper than DC fast charging electricity. Although in this case, it's actually free. So hmm, maybe that doesn't always apply. Um, but also, I think it's worth mentioning that very rarely will you go from zero to 100% out on the road, or at least if you do, that's really not the most convenient way to charge. Typically, I recommend pulling into fast chargers between five and, yeah, right around 5% state of charge, between three and 8%, let's just say, and then riding that fast charging curve. Now, we're not totally sure how this thing charges. I can't tell you when to charge up until, but of course, in my full charging review, I will put all of that information in there. But again, the last bit of the pack, the top bit always takes a long time. I never recommend going dead to full. It's the hardest thing on the battery pack, takes the most of your time, and it's just clogs up the stations longer too. So I always recommend charging just enough to get to the next station where you can then arrive at 5% state of charge or so, and then do the whole thing again, the cannonballing method. All right, it looks like we lost all bars here. I just kicked off of the climate control. Let's take a look as to what it says. 1%. Well, I would say <laughs> the truck doesn't want to move really. Uh, yeah, reduced acceleration, no bars. I think maybe it doesn't show 0% like the Bolt, but it's got nothing on here. So I'd say we're completely um, out. I also love this. I have it set up perfectly. So when I get this mounted, I can record the charging session right here on the tailgate. How sick is that? Um, but we cannot... Um, uh, sort of back end math into figuring out how big the usable capacity of the battery pack is. We can really only do that while draining because there's so many losses when charging at 500 amps or over. Wow, no light in the charge port. Is there? Oh yeah, there is. Okay, just a pretty dim one, but this is also not getting out of the way as much as I would like it to. 
That is like so flimsy. BMW, I was just driving the i7 the other day, like they get the charge port done so right. Let's get this thing plugged in and get uh, get charging. I've just plugged it in and yes, the truck does not show 0%. It's like the bolt. So it was communicating to the charger 0%. But look at that, 335 kilowatts at zero. Absolutely crazy. We've already put three kilowatt hours into this thing. Just insanely fast charging here. Fans are rocking. So yes, let's let this thing charge up, see how many kilowatt hours we dump in. Already up to four. We'll analyze the footage and then uh, we'll, we'll run the cost calculations when we get back home. But there you go, I'll see you guys, probably not tonight, probably tomorrow, where we will crunch the numbers. Look at this thing, I just love it so much. I know I shouldn't, but I really do. You join me back at home to evaluate some numbers and uh, they're getting big. <laughs> We're not talking a few dollar charging session here. Um, but, but what I want to do is pull you over here and talk about A, the test, and then I'll bring you through this little spreadsheet that I created. But uh, test went really well. Uh, took two hours and 40 minutes roughly to charge. I actually fell asleep while it was charging. And so um, I woke up 15 minutes after it had completed. So uh, good thing it was in the middle of the night. I didn't block any other drivers from it. I think actually the first time ever I've left a car plugged in after it's completed. Very interesting, but I was out cold. I had the cameras run in and I was dead asleep, uh, but no climate control. I didn't run any accessory load, nothing like that. It was freezing in there. <laughs> it was wild. So um, we went again from zero to 100% state of charge. Now um, we delivered to the car out of the DC charging port uh, 224 kilowatt hours. That's how many units we were charged for by Electrify America. The one thing to keep in mind is these are not instrumented uh, data devices. So it's possible there are some fluctuations, especially on a charging session this big. I'd be curious to see what that level of delta of accuracy is allowable um, and what's legal, of course, because there's uh, going to have to be some legal mandates as to how to build the charging. I just don't know, to be honest. Um, I also want to say that during the 70 mile per hour highway range test, which will probably be tomorrow's video, uh, spoiler alert, yeah, uh, I pulled 213 kilowatt hours out of the pack during the range test on a 212 kilowatt hour usable battery pack claimed. So I was able to actually get more than what GM said. No surprise that we delivered more power to the vehicle than... Um, then uh, we, we are able to use. There's always losses when charging, but seemingly very low losses. Come over here and I'll show you the numbers just so you can take a look. So total usable in the range test, 213 kilowatt hours. Total delivered here, 224. It's possible we weren't as low as when I did the range test. When I did the range test, the truck was literally dying on the road. So that, that will come. I almost didn't make it back to the charging station. So let's say the losses are five to six to seven percent somewhere in there 11 kilowatt hour losses based off of that too low not sure not a huge deal really it was also cold which helps with heat loss um it took 152 minutes to go zero to 100 now one point i want to make is this is not the ideal charging session i've done multiple charging sessions after this and have been able to beat this one um but this is going from zero to full, which puts a huge stress on the entire system. Uh, and I'm also, I'm gonna show you this curve as well as the theoretical maximums that I was able to pull as well. So come on in, let's take a look. I've done all of the Electrify America rates and the home rates. So if you walk up, pay with a credit card, this is gonna be $96.32. Before taxes and fees, it's actually over $100 to charge this thing, uh, which I just think is, it's the first production EV, passenger EV, that costs more than $100 to charge, zero to full. Now, in reality, very rarely are you ever gonna be doing it. In my, I don't know, many years of driving electric cars, I've only probably done it less than 10 times out of necessity, but it does happen and it can happen from time to time, especially when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Most likely Hummer EV owners will use the 31 cent Pass Plus membership. I highly recommend it. You front load the $4 a month and now you're down to about 70 bucks, maybe 72, $73 with some taxes and fees. That seems pretty reasonable. I mean, we can run the calculations compared to a gas car at gas prices. I'll leave you guys to do that on your own. This is not a comparison. I just wanted to show you what these things cost. 
What's interesting though, is when we start getting into the time-based charging. Now this is factoring in from, again, dead to full, but if you maximize the charging speed of the Hummer, for example, this thing pulls over 300 kilowatts you know, it's doing 350 down low, 360. We saw over 360 kilowatts on this thing. Um, you're going to be, you know, by the time you get to 60%, you're still about 250 kilowatts. If you're at a per minute station, especially if you have the Electrify America Pass Plus rate, your $36, it might be like 15 bucks, 10 or 15 bucks just to juice it up pretty high. That's like the cheat code if you own one of these, probably significantly cheaper than even home electricity at that point. I really think EA needs to bump up their uh, per minute pricing. I'm not here to promote more expensive charging, but I am here to promote hopefully viable business models to charging. And uh, pricing like this means that EA certainly is not relying on the consumer to bring in money. They're relying on other sources of income or I'm not really sure. Not my, I can't comment. I don't know. But then let's get to more realistic numbers here. Uh, national average electricity rate will vary, but I just put in 13 cents per kilowatt hour. That was the last most recent number I could find, and it cost about $29.12 to charge it up. We're really lucky here in Colorado, in Fort Collins in particular, it would only cost me about $16 to go zero to full on this thing. Again, the home numbers I'm basing off of the DC charging, which probably will have even a bit more losses than home charging, although there still are some, um, so it might actually be even a little bit less expensive than that at home, but huge spread of charging the Hummer EV. I would say anywhere from a as low as free Hummer EV doesn't come with any free charging plans. They're actually just give you a 48 amp home on board, uh, home charger. It doesn't even have an 80 amp on board charger. It's only 48 amps, which is way too slow for that thing, in my opinion. Um, but there you go. There you have it. Hummer EV about, let's say on the super low end, about 10 to $12 for a full charge, all the way up to well over $100, depending on some pricing models. I've arrived at DC fast chargers that are 60, 65 cents per kilowatt hour. I use one here in Colorado that's 35 cents a kilowatt hour plus 20 cents a minute. And if you're, and it's a slow charger, it's a CPE 250, so the Hummer only gets about 100 kilowatt peak on there. You're really, that's an expensive charge at that point, 150, $170 to charge up the Hummer on that thing dead to full depending on, you know, again, if you're going to 100% or not, that's just lots of money added up. But um, there you go, huge spread. That's how much it costs to charge the Hummer EV. The EA station I went there today, it's no longer in complimentary charge. They must have saw the bill for the Hummer EV charging. Thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. We'll see you tomorrow with the Hummer EV range test.